They say history is written by the winners. Well, sometimes those winners straight up lied. Here are some super famous events that didn't even happen. You probably heard the story of $100 bill guy Benjamin Franklin discovering electricity by flying a kite with a key tied to it in a storm, right? The kite is struck by lightning, Franklin touches the key, gets shocked, and is like, wow, turns out electricity exists. But according to the geniuses over at Mental Floss, that experiment didn't happen that way, if it ever happened at all. People already knew about electricity, and the kite thing was just an idea Franklin had to see if lightning and electricity were the same thing, and if you could make electricity from lightning. So did Franklin even do the kite experiment? It's debatable, but what's not debatable is that he would have been totally fried to a crisp if he did, according to Mythbusters. And it looks like you got enough to kill him. Yeah, look at that. Look if at that. Just <laughs> enough, then wow. you'd be dead. But it is true that Benjamin Franklin is responsible for proving that lightning and electricity are the same, which led to the invention of the lightning rod. And that's lit. You know George Washington, first president, one dollar bill guy, Mount Rushmore? Oh yeah, there's also the whole cherry tree story, which goes like this. When he was a kid, George's dad gave him a hatchet, a totally normal and safe 18th century present. George did what most kids would do. He started hacking away at a cherry tree. When George's dad confronted him about the carnage, the future president said, I cannot tell a lie, I did cut it with my hatchet. But that story about not lying is itself a total lie, because of course it is. It never happened. It's false. It never happened. It's a fake. The story was introduced in the fifth edition of a biography of Washington from 1806 by an author named Mason Locke Weems, who used a lie in an attempt to tie Washington's political success to a life of virtue. Ironic AF, but hey, at least it gave the world this. Zoom, enhance, it's baby George. Adorable. This one is huge. At some point, American kids are all taught that this Italian guy with this thing on his head, Christopher Columbus, discovered America in 1492. He sailed across the ocean blue with his ships the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria in an attempt to reach Asia and prove the world was round. Except almost none of that is true. The ancient Greeks even knew that the Earth was round and they were basically all statues. And come on now, people. Columbus definitely didn't discover America. There were thousands of people already living there. But he also wasn't even the first European to land in the Western Hemisphere. Leif Erikson likely landed and made a settlement in North America 500 years earlier. Plus, Columbus never even set foot on the soil of the North American mainland, only various islands in the Caribbean. And what's worse, his ships probably weren't even named the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, according to the fact checkers at the Washington Post. Yeah, everything you know is pretty much a lie. Sorry. The image of Paul Revere blasting through the countryside warning colonial Americans that the British are coming sounds like something from a movie, right? But it's actually from a poem, which are kind of like little movies you see in your mind. Anyway, it was written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, famous poet guy, and let's just say that liberties were taken. This one was invented by a writer. Longfellow rearranged and simplified the story to make it pop. For one thing, Paul Revere didn't receive the famous one if by land, two if by sea lantern signals. He sent them. He wasn't writing alone, either. He was part of a larger warning system. He didn't even shout, the British are coming, like a new episode of The Great British Baking Show just dropped. So yeah, Paul Revere was important and a hero, but don't believe the hype. If you ever failed a test in school, there's a chance some helpful adult told you to cheer up because even Albert Einstein failed math as a kid. Like, you might not know the difference between a trapezoid and a rhombus now, but someday you could invent famous math stuff to put on chalkboards and stock images. Well, the Washington Post hates to be the bearer of bad news, but it seems that young Einstein's legendary poor elementary school performance is, well, just that, a legend. Einstein, in fact, in true Einstein form, got very good grades in school. By age 11, he was studying college-level physics. So where did the story come from? Einstein? It turns out that Einstein did fail the entrance exam to the Zurich Polytechnic School the first time he took it, when he was still 16, almost two years away from graduating high school. But the reason he failed was because the exam was in French, a language he had barely studied. So he had some trouble with the language and biology sections, but he nailed the math portion and the stick out your tongue challenge, obviously. The rest is history. Why did the angry peasant class of the French Revolution cut off the head of their queen, Marie Antoinette? According to popular knowledge, it was because she said some real disrespectful stuff about cake and who gets to have some. The story goes that someone told the queen that the people of France had no bread, to which she replied, Let them eat cake. It's a good joke, but it's also exactly the kind of thing an out-of-touch, oblivious person would say, like millennials are killing the diamond industry. But guess what? There's no historical evidence that Marie Antoinette ever said this. 
Encyclopedia Britannica explains that variations on the let them eat cake rich person dunk existed around the world in other languages for centuries before Marie Antoinette was even born. The first occurrence in French was in a book written by a philosopher who attributes the quote to an anonymous princess. Revolutionaries likely applied Marie Antoinette's name to the story as a form of cake-related propaganda, which is hands down the yummiest kind of propaganda. The story goes that on All Hallows' Eve in 1517, an obscure German monk named Martin Luther strolled up to All Saints' Church and nailed to the door a list of his soon-to-be-famous 95 Theses, which laid out grievances with the Catholic Church. This bold act kicked off the Protestant Reformation and changed the world. But did this sassy monk really stroll up to the church door hammer in hand and ring out revolution across the land? Experts say no way. It's fiction. First of all, the story was first written by someone who could not possibly have witnessed it, and it was first published after Luther died, and it appears he went his whole life without mentioning the story to anyone. So how did Luther ask to speak to the manager? Probably through a letter, which isn't nearly as exciting as a man with this haircut embracing his inner HGTV. An enormous fire hit the city of Rome during the early days of its empire, burning for six days and consuming 70% of the city, leaving about half the population without homes. Popular legend states that Emperor Nero, who always fancied himself to be a great artist, spent the time during the fire playing music and singing about Rome's destruction. This story gave rise to the popular expression, Nero fiddled while Rome burned, which has gone on to describe anyone who acts ineffectually during a time of crisis. The first part of the saying is easy enough to debunk. The fiddle didn't exist until about a thousand years later. If Nero was playing anything at all, it would have been an instrument similar to a lyre, a bit like an ancient guitar. However, there is no evidence he was playing any instrument while Rome burned. The closest report comes from a Roman historian who says that there were claims that Nero sang about the destruction of Troy during the fire, but even the historian thought that story was likely bogus. The fact is, though, that Nero was still kind of a jerk about the fire, even if he didn't fiddle during it. He blamed the whole thing on the obscure religious cult called the Christians, and then built a big house for himself on the ruins. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more messed up history videos about world history are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.